Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the extensible business reporting language known as XBRL. Think about the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. They require companies to submit many reports, many financial reports, such as 10K, 10Q, 8Q, 20F, 40F, etc. And these forms, these reports are coming from many different industries, obviously from from many different companies, and in, in some situation from different countries. Think about all these reports being submitted to the SEC. Well, think about all the manual paperwork that they have to deal with. Well, you know, that's not going to happen. What they do, they can submit everything electronically. Because if they submit manual paperwork, well, guess what? The SEC will be buried with paperwork. Well, then let them submit the work electronically. Now, how easily to compare the data and analyze the data if you submit everything electronically? Well, what can you do? You can take everything and input everything into an Excel or SEC software, but yikes, then the SEC will have to do all this transformation. Well, or what happened is this. Companies use different software as well, like SAP, Oracle, QuickBooks, Enterprises, some proprietary software, etc. Well, that's also a problem because even if they submit the data for you electronically from their software, each one of them use a different software. How about we find a solution? We make them all use the same software. Well, yeah, that would be nice, but that's not going to happen. Each company wants to use their own software. So to, to resolve this problem, we introduce XBRL, the Extensible Business Reporting Language. It's, a stru it's, it's structured the di digital reporting by tagging the data to communicate this data with the SEC. What does that mean? It means we're going to take your data, whatever system you are using, SAP, Oracle, QuickBooks, your own proprietary software, you're using basic Excel. I don't care how you are doing your data. You're going to take your data, you're going to tag it, and you're going to tag it and basically take it through a translation software in quote translation software they're going to turn it into an xprl and you communicate this information to me and everyone will be communicating the same information standardized data now let's take a look at this process a little bit further to see how it works before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Imagine we have company A. They have financial statements and data that they will need to submit to the IRS. Uh, sorry, to the SEC. So they're going to take this finan these financial statements and data and input them into, I'm just going to call this, in quote, a translation software. There's no such thing as translation software. But simply put, they're going to tag them. Tag them using certain taxonomy into a standard language. Then they're going to, turn them into electronic e-financial statement and data that's standardized and those all of them will give us xbrl so this is company a well company b will do the same thing they will take their information translate their information in quote then they will submit everything electronically in xbrl form so this is the con this is the overall concept even drilling a little bit further think about company a company b and company c Company A, they have debtors. They call their account receivable debtor. Company B called their account receivable due from customers. Company C called their account receivable trade receivable. Now, when you, tra when you transmit this information, you want to call this accounts receivable. So what you do, think about, this is a simple example. Think about taking all these naming convention and turning them into a standardized name, like account receivable. This is a simplified way to show you the purpose of it. So company A, when they submit their, SE, their information to the SEC, it's account receivable. Company B, account receivable. Company C, account receivable. It's a common language. Think about Switzerland. <laughs> what do I mean by that? 
in Switzerland, you have people that speak German, you have people that speak Italian, you have people that speak Spanish. Guess what? Which language are we going to use? Well, let's agree on a common language. Let's assume English. So everyone will use English as a common language. Same concept with XBRL, because each one of them, each one of them uses a different language, then let's all use the same language as a common language. XBRL gets you to the same point. And I hope this analogy makes sense. What are the benefits of XBRL? Well, digital reporting. It facilitates the creation, sharing, and analysis of financial statements and business information. Who would be interested in something like this? Analysts, investors, they're going to get the information very quickly, electronically, and it's you can analyze it. Two, standardization. You're harmonizing. Think about two different companies from two different countries. Well, if you standardize their data, then you can compare them. Tag in the financial data, assigning unique tags, and we're going to talk about tax shortly. Define taxonomy, simplifying data understanding and usage. Simply put, everybody, everyone's going to be using the same language. So revenue is revenue once it's properly tagged. You might call it something else for your company or for your industry, but you are translated into one language. International use. Well, it's adopted by regulators, financial organization, and government worldwide for reporting purposes. So, for example, if you're a company and you want to report, be, report your information to the U.S. governmental agencies or to the SEC, you could use this language, and it doesn't matter in which country you are. You can list your stock because now the SEC can understand your data. Accuracy and efficiency. Automate data exchange and reduce manual entry, which would enhance speed and accuracy. That's another benefit of XBRL. And obviously, compliance required or recommended by global regulators' bodies, like the SEC, to streamline financial reporting and data analysis. Those are all benefits of using XBRL. Now, let's dive a little bit more into XBRL. There are four levels of tagging. Remember, I told you you will need to tag the data so you can translate it. So the software tag it and then you will call it revenue through that tag. There are four levels of tagging. There's level one, each complete footnote and schedule is tagged as a single block of text. Well, I hope you know what a note is. A note would look something like this. Like for example, note one. And in note one, you're gonna have many information. This is tagging, this is notes means what? Notes means the description about that accompany the financial statements. The, the tagging. Now, each complete footnote and financial statement schedule is tagged as a single block of text. This means that the entire section of the footnote or schedule are marked with one tag. So first you tag the whole note, representing them as a distinct element, but not breaking them further. For example, an entire footnote on, for example, that restructure is tagged as one block. In this case, all the details about the term loans, credit facilities, interest rate, and maturity date within the footnote are included in one tag without separating the individual components. So on level one, you will take one note and you tag the whole note. Now within that note, there's going to be many different data. For example, this note about debt restructuring, you're going to have the term loans, you're going to have the credit facilities, the interest rate, the maturity date. You're not tagging those specifically on level one. And as you go through each level, you're going to drill further. L level two tagging. And level two tagging each accounting policy within the significant accounting policy footnote is tagged as a single block. So again, going back and looking at significant, we have a note called, every company will have to report a note called significant accounting policies. Okay, now with these significant accounting policies, what you're going to have, you're going to have many policies, many policies. Now, this level... This level involves tagging each significant accounting policy within the significant accounting policy footnote. Rather than tagging the entire footnote as one block, which we do as one block, level two require each major accounting policy to be tagged separately. And this provides more detail and clarity. For example, in a company significant accounting policies, there might be policies about revenue recognition. You will tag revenue recognition separately. So if somebody wants to look specifically at revenue recognition, you will have separate tag about inventory valuation. This is level two tagging. This is tagging within the whole description, depreciation method. Each of these policies is tagged separately. Notice you are drilling. You went from the note and now you are drilling inside the note. You are tagging inside the note. So the revenue recognition policy is one tag 
the inventory valuation is another, so on and so forth. Now, is it within this one single node that's called significant accounting policy? Then we have level three tagging. Each table within each footnote or schedule is tagged as a separate box. Now, with inserting notes, for example, if we're talking about debt, within the debt, you're going to have many types of debt with different maturity date, with different scheduling. When do you have to pay them? So on and so forth. So you're going to have various schedules. Now, on level three, each table, you're going to have many tables within one note, is stacked separately. At this stage, each table within a footnote or schedule is tagged as a separate block or text. This means that different tables such as those detailing financial asset liabilities, revenue breakdown within footnote are individually tagged. It provides, again, more granular. You're zooming in, allowing users to identify and analyze specific data sets within the footnotes, within the footnotes. Example, within the footnotes about employee benefit, let's assume you're looking at the footnotes of employee benefit, there might be several tables, such as the pension plan cost, other showing post-retirement benefit obligation. And each of these labels is tagged individually. So the pension plan cost is one tag. So if somebody would want to look at the pension plan cost, they can look at it separately. If they look at the post-retirement benefit obligation, it's tagged separately. And level four, this is going even further, is within each footnote or schedule. Now you're going into each footnote or schedule. Each amount, for example, monetary value, percentage, and number is required to be tagged separately. The more detail, the most detailed is level four, required within each footnote or schedule, each amount, whether it's monetary, must be tagged separately. This allows the highest level of precision. Users can access and analyze individual data point like specific financial figure within the notes. Example will be, for example, if we're looking at the company leases, there could be various amount like total lease expense, cash paid, for the amount included in the measurement of lease liabilities, future lease payment obligation. You can, those individual accounts are tagged separately and can, can be retrieved for analysis. Each of these amounts within the footnote is tagged separately. So the total lease, lease expense is one note, cash paid for lease liabilities is another, so on and so forth. Let's talk about something called inline xbrl what's inline xbrl it's taking xbrl and marrying xbrl to html a programming language inline xbrl or ixbrl is an advanced format for presenting financial data combining the strength and the uniqueness and the precision of xbrl with the versatility of html the sec requires this format for periodic and interim financial reporting what's the purpose of this the output of xbrl is a document that is both human readable, easily readable by a human because HTML, you can build anything you would like to, and it's machine readable. The tags are still there. So humans can easily read it, machines can easily read it. It has a dual functionality, and that's that's the advantage of IXBRL or inline XBRL. So a human can read the HTML part of the document as a standard web page, and you know, HTML is a very versatile, rich, rich web language, while machine software system can read and process the embedded XBRL data for analysis and data processing. So a human can view it, it looks nice, it looks good, you can see it quickly, machine can read it, the best of both worlds. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. Which level of XBRL tagging require each significant accounting policy to be tagged as a single block? What are we looking here? each significant accounting policy. So not the whole accounting policy, each one is tagged. Is it level one, level two, level three, and level four? What is level one? Well, level one involving tagging, tagging the entire footnote or schedule as a single block, not individual accounting policies, so it's not one. Level two involves tagging each significant accounting policy within the within the policy's footnote separately. That sounds like level two. What about level three? Level three focus on tagging each table within a footnote or schedule separately. Now we're not we're not drilling that much based on this question. And level four is what? Level four tagging each specific amount or percentage within a table or within a footnote. This is too detailed. The answer is level two. What should you do now? You wanna go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs. That's gonna help you understand and prepare to answer questions about XBRL, 
extensible business reporting language. This topic is tested on the CPA exam. Good luck, study hard, invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it and stay safe.